Hi everyone, today I want to talk to you about the differences between a requirements.txt file and a lock file, in particular a pip file.lock file used by pipenv. Um, I'm going to talk about uh, what they both are and the advantages of the lock file and why I use it in all of my projects. So to get started, I'm in a clean environment, so I'm just going to install the requests library. Um, we can imagine that this is the only dependency for uh, my project in this situation. So we've installed it, we call pip freeze, and here we have all of my dependencies. So traditionally, the way that we would specify a project's dependencies would be to call pip freeze and send that into a requirements.txt file and then associate that file with our project. Now, this works fine, and it's a tried and true mechanism. However, it does lack some functionality. In particular, it doesn't store any hash of the installed package. So this means that if a malicious actor gained access to the publishing credentials for the requests package, they could republish requests version 2.23.0 and the next time a developer came along and ran pip install r requirements.txt, they would not install the legitimate requests 2.23.0 package that I originally specified, but actually the malicious package that the bad actor published in the interim between when I specified these dependencies and when they actually installed them. So, this is where lock files come in and kind of provide a, a nice check against this particular vulnerability. So uh, let's look at an example of a lock file that specifies the same dependencies as we have here. So I will install pipenv. And then from here, I will say pipenv install requests. Now this is going to create a virtual environment and install requests into it. Oops, uh, what happened? Pip env install requests. Assertion error. Oh, uh, this is because I'm in root. So let me go cd uh, user local source. SRC. There we go. Okay, so this doesn't work at the root of your file system. Um, I would not recommend working in the root of your file system either way, though. So let's rerun this. And just to show you, uh, PW print working directory, I'm now in user local source. So let's run pip and install requests again. And it's creating a virtual environment for us, as well as creating a pip file.lock, which specifies our dependencies. This is what we, it means when it says locking packages dependencies. And now let's just cat out the lock file and see what it looks like. And here, just like in requirements.txt, we specify the versions of these packages. I'll go down to requests so we have a continued example, so 2.23.0. However, in addition to that, we specify hashes of uh, the code that we actually installed when we downloaded this. And so what this means, when another developer goes to install my packages that I specified using uh, pipenv, um, in particular, pipenv install deploy, um, pipenv will basically fail the installation if the if any of these packages hashes don't match those specified in the lock file. Um, so this is how we guard against installing republished packages by a malicious actor. Now there are a lot of other advantages to using lock files. Um, pipenv is one way of, of working with lock files and poetry is another library that allows us to package uh, package our projects with uh, lock files as well. 
Um, I use both. Uh, I just decided to use pipenv in this example because I use it slightly more than poetry. But uh, that discussion is for another time. So that's it. I hope you enjoyed this, and I hope that you start using lock files in your projects. Stay well.